Oh, hello. It's you again. Back for more respiratory therapy instruction, huh? Well, don't worry. There's plenty more of that. You know, an interesting subject in uh, respiratory therapy is adult ventilatory monitoring. If you go ahead and turn to page 54 in your clinical guidelines manual, you can follow along with me as we cover these important steps. You know, some people think that there's a lot of steps in adult ventilatory monitoring, but they're incorrect. There's only 13. So let's go ahead and start on the step that I love to start on. Step one. Step one encompasses a lot of things. Well, actually it encompasses one thing. And that's checking the patient's chart. For the purposes of this instructional video, our patient's name will be Hewlett Packard. Great, I'm glad you have that written down. Let's go ahead and review this chart and see what we need to do for this patient. Now that you've reviewed your patient's chart, you can move on to step two, gathering your equipment. You're pretty much done with this, so go ahead and put it back where you found it. And let's move on. When gathering your equipment, there's a few things you're going to need. First and foremost, your trusty pole socks. Next up, you're going to want to bring a suction catheter with you if one isn't already in line. Another handy thing to have is this little baby, a respirometer, as well as this, a pressure manometer, and of course, a cuff pressure manometer. Oh, after you've gathered all of your equipment, you're going to want to maintain a sepsis. Do you remember how to do that? <laughs> I didn't think so. Let me go ahead and show you. Hey, you keep it up? Let's hope so. This next step is really important. It's called maintaining asepsis. So let's go ahead and wash our hands. Now typically when you're maintaining asepsis, you're gonna to wanna to wash your hands for 30 seconds. No less, no more. But due to time limitations of this video, we're only gonna wash our hands for 29 seconds. And we're done. Now when you're getting ready to do a mechanical ventilation check, one thing you may run into is contact precautions. You'll always want to follow the standard of contact precautions to protect you from such things as HIV, hepatitis C, and even lice. The patient we're about to check has all of them. So let's go ahead and gown up. Okay, now we're ready to perform our vent check. Now if you've been keeping up, we're on step four assessing the patient. Some things you're going to want to assess for are things like patient color. This patient is a healthy brown. Vital signs, yep, they're there. Level of consciousness, hello, <laughs> none. And of course, breath sounds. Step five of our Vent check is emptying the condensation of the patient. <sighs> there we go. Boy, he had a lot. After you've emptied your disgusting condensation from your patient, you're gonna go ahead and suction them. This is always a lot of fun. All right, here comes the worm. There we go. In step seven, you're going to be recording your ventilatory parameters on your vent. You'll accomplish this by using your vent sheet. You'll accomplish this also by doing it every two hours. A bit redundant, but important. Now following step seven is step eight, in which you'll be measuring your ventilatory mechanics. You'll record the information on the same vent sheet. You'll also be recording it every two hours, so get used to it. So step nine in your ventilated patient's care will consist of performing airway care. And for that, you're going to 
observe and record tube placement, uh, change tube slash position if necessary, and perform trach care if indicated. Uh, he's not trach, so we're not going to do that. Now for step 10 of our patient procedure, what we're going to want to be doing is monitoring their oxygenation. Now this is where your pulse ox is going to come in handy. Did you bring yours? I know I did. So for step 11 of our sheet, we're going to go ahead and perform many ordered therapies for this particular patient. Now our friend here has incentive spirometry ordered for him, so let's go ahead and perform that. Now, sir, I'm going to want you to inhale as hard as you can. Sir, you can do better than that. Maybe you'll do better tomorrow. Now, we're going to go ahead and continue on in step 12, in which we're going to reassess the patient. There. So for step 12, we're going to go ahead and reassess our patient. For this, we're going to want to make sure that our line is secure and tight as well as make sure that our patient is comfortable. Our line looks fine, and our patient is both paralyzed and sedated, so you don't have to worry about him being uncomfortable. Now step 13 is often ignored, but it's very important nonetheless. It involves cleaning up your workstation. There we go. Oh. <laughs> Almost forgot. Well, hopefully you've learned a thing or two about monitoring an adult ventilator. And you know, if you follow all of these easy to follow 13 steps, your patients, they're going to be just fine. See? <laughs> Another case solved.